Greetings and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Installation of Exchange 2013. The installation process of Exchange 2013 is not your typical next next finish type of install. You know what I'm talking about. The installations where you pretty much have to just follow the prompts and it almost installs itself. With Exchange 2013, the choices you make must be thought out well in advance and all of your prerequisites must be complete or Exchange simply won't install. Or worse yet, it might install partially and then fail and sometimes when that happens you pretty much are looking at a do-over because then little things are not quite right as you go forward. So even if it says that you complete the installation by fixing the prerequisites that were missing and so forth, you still might have an incomplete install. So what you really want is for that installation to go as smoothly as possible. And the key to that is making sure that you've met all of the prerequisites, making sure your Active Directory is set up properly, and making sure that your Exchange server itself has all of the needed hardware and software requirements before attempting the install. So let's consider our scenario for a moment with SpyTech Prime. We're looking at installing Exchange 2013 into an environment that's running Server 2008 R2 for all domain controllers. And we have a forest and domain functional level at Server 2008 R2. So we meet that requirement. We're in a single site environment and the Active Directory schema has been updated. We're installing Exchange 2013 on a server, it's Server 2012, and it's running as a virtual system with 8 gigabytes of RAM. All of the prerequisites for Server 2012 have been installed. The roles and features and added components that are necessary for your Exchange 2013 installation. One thing to note is that when we added the Office 2010 filter pack and then upgraded to SP1, that that was something we did because at the time there was no filter pack for 2013. Well, as of today, there is a filter pack for Office 2013. So in the future, when you're doing that part of the installation, you would install the Office 2013 filter pack. Okay, so let's jump over to our server and let's perform the actual installation of Exchange 2013. Alright, so here we are on our server 2012 and ultimately this system should be ready for the full installation of Exchange 2013. So we have our Exchange 2013 files actually connected up to this system as an ISO and so here we have the drive there. If we click install or run program it kicks off the setup and the first thing it asks us to do is to check for updates. Now we don't have to but it's always a good idea to connect to the internet and check for updates so that we make sure we have all of the latest information before we go forward. So we'll click Next. And it lets us know that no updates were found, so we can just move forward. We click Next. It begins the process of copying files that are needed to install Exchange. We see it's initializing setup. Okay, and it takes us to the introduction screen. We can read the introduction. It says, Welcome to Microsoft Exchange Server 2013. You can read this perhaps when you're doing your own installations. For us, we'll just click Next to move forward. And, as always, we have to accept the license agreement. And you're welcome to read through this as well when you're doing an installation. Make sure you agree with the license agreement. And then click Next. Now, it says, use recommended settings exchange server will automatically check online for solutions when encountering errors and provide usage feedback to Microsoft to help improve future exchange features personally I always recommend this option because it gives Microsoft the opportunity to improve exchange for future releases if you do not want to go with the recommended settings then you can say don't use recommended settings and you can manually configure these settings after installation is complete so for us, we'll leave the first option chosen and we'll click Next. Okay, so at this point, it goes to install the management tools. You can see that's kind of grayed out. You can't even turn that on or off. But what you can do is decide whether or not you want a mailbox role, a client access role, or both. So we're actually going to select both. 
You'll note the client access role was grayed out until we selected it, but now you can see we're going to install both of these roles. Now it says automatically install Windows Server roles and features that are required to install Exchange Server. In our case we already did this. We went through ahead of time and we performed that PowerShell command that included all of the roles and features. Now in the event you wanted to do it this way you could do it this way as well. I've just found that it's better to have everything installed as far as roles and features ahead of time before going through this wizard. So we'll deselect this option and we'll click Next. It checks to make sure that we have enough disk space. We can also decide where we want to put the installation as far as the location for the files. In our case we're going to leave the default but if we wanted to we could click Browse and we could change that location to another drive. We click Next. And you recall we talked about this that if we used the prepare AD switch with the organization name then we would not see this screen here. Being that we did not do that when we were running the command line switches we have the opportunity to put in the name for the exchange organization right here. So in our case it's spy tech prime and we click next. Notice malware protection settings. It says malware scanning helps protect your messaging environment by detecting messages that may contain viruses or spyware. It can be turned off, replaced, or paired with other premium services for layered protection. So in our case, we do not want to disable malware scanning, so we'll say no. But if we did have another solution that we wanted to utilize, we could say yes to disable the automatic default malware scanning. We'll click Next. and now we see it's performing a readiness check. This will make sure that all of the prerequisites are installed and everything is fine. Now you'll note that it says setup will prepare the organization for exchange by using setup forward slash prepare AD. And it says no exchange 2010 server roles have been detected in this topology. So ultimately what it's telling us is it's looked at our Active Directory environment and we do not have a legacy version of exchange running. Not Exchange 2010 or 2007. So that's good. This is a brand new installation and it sees that. It also sees that we have not prepared our Active Directory so it's letting us know that it's going to run the prepare AD switch. And of course it already knows the organization name because we told it that a couple of steps back with the dialog screen. So it is going to run these things in the background. One of the things that will not have to happen is the schema won't have to be prepared because we already did that using the setup forward slash prepare schema earlier on. So this is all looking fine. We click install and now it goes through the process of preparing the organization and you can see there are 15 different steps. This is going to take a while but when it's done hopefully without any errors we're going to have a fully functional Exchange 2013 server environment with both the mailbox server role and the client access server role installed on the same box. So being that this takes a while, let's jump ahead to the point where the installation is complete. And as you can see it says setup completed. Congratulations, setup has finished successfully. To complete the installation of Exchange Server 2013, reboot the computer. So at this point it says you can view additional post-installation tasks by going to this link. And if you click the little checkbox here, it will launch the Exchange Administration Center after finishing Exchange Setup. So we can reboot now or we can have it launch the Exchange Administration Center. Let's click Finish. And here we have the Exchange Administration Center, or EAC for short. We can log in at this point and we can begin our configuration, but really it's better to reboot the server now that Exchange has been installed. We'll reboot and during the reboot process we'll jump back over to the slides and we'll talk a little bit more about the installation itself and what we just saw as far as the various stages of it. Not to worry, there's plenty of time to get into the Exchange Admin Center. We'll definitely be spending plenty of time with the EAC.
Okay, so you saw how we went through the installation process, but that last part of the installation, as it was installing everything, it gave us 15 different steps of the setup progress. Now, it's important to note that some of these steps may not be included in your installations, and that's because as we go through it, you'll see there are some steps that you may not have because of the options you chose or because of the work that you did before you did the install. For example, step number one was organization preparation. Now, if you did all of the organization prep already, then you won't have a 15-step program. That step will be unnecessary. So, if you did the organization prep through the forward slash prepare AD and then prepared the domain with the prepare all domains or one of the other switches, well, then in that case, you would not need step one. Step two, stopping services. Step three, copy exchange files. Step four, language files. Step five, restoring services. Step six, languages. Step seven, management tools. So at this point, it installed the management tools that were necessary for you to be able to work with your Exchange server, which includes things like your Exchange management shell. Step eight, the mailbox role transport service. Now again, note, this is a specific role step. So if you installed the mailbox server role on its own, then you would see this step. If you installed the client access server role on its own, then you would not see this step. In our case, we chose both roles, so we're going to see all of the different steps. But again, don't freak out if you're doing an installation of an Exchange server and you only chose one of the roles. Don't be surprised to not see all of the steps that we saw because, again, we installed both server roles. So step eight is the transport service. Step nine is the mailbox server role, the client access service. Step 10 is another mailbox server role with the unified messaging service. Step 11, another mailbox role with the mailbox service. So a lot of services for the mailbox server role. Then with step 12, we see the client access role installing the front end transport service. Step 13, we see the client access role installing the client access front end service. And then step 14, we see it says finalizing setup with step 15 really being setup has completed, click finish. So all of this occurs during that final portion of the install process and in some cases it might get stuck on one of these steps. But keep this in mind, sometimes it's not that it's stuck, it just takes a little while to finish the task. For example, with the mailbox server role, it might stay at 3% or 10% or whatever for a long period of time. Just let it sit until it either finishes the installation or returns an error message your way. Because if it cannot move forward, it will eventually respond back and say, there's a problem. But if it just appears to look like it's hung, it's not that it's hung, it's still working forward. It's just that the actual progress bar may not be indicating the percentage properly when it comes to the installation. There are times when it will respond back and say, hey, there was a problem here and you need to fix the problem. And those problems can be anything from not being able to communicate with your Active Directory to perhaps not having everything properly set up on the server itself, or perhaps there's a problem with the server that you're not aware of. So at that point, you would go right into a normal troubleshooting mode and you would start investigating through Event Viewer and through the various logs. Now, let's jump back over to the server because we know that the installation worked. We know that it said that everything completed properly, but there is a way for us to confirm that the installation was correct. So, let's jump over and see how we would do that. All right, so my favorite way to test if an Exchange server is up and running is to just go in and start working with it. And then if something goes wrong, then I know it's not working. But you can just use a commandlet to see if the Exchange server is installed. And so to do that, here we'll go to the Start screen. We'll type in Exchange to get us to our Exchange Management shell. I know we haven't worked with the Management shell uh, too much just yet, but that's okay. We're just going to type in this one commandlet. It's get-exchange-server, and we'll hit Enter. And it tells us a little bit, but you can see in this format, we're really not able to determine much regarding our installation. It looks good, but we need a little bit better format here. So what we want to do is we want to be able to get a better view of things. So if we put this commandlet in again and hit the space bar, put in a pipeline, 
that's that little up and down key entry that on my keyboard is right above the backslash and so if we put that in that's called uh, pipelining it out and then we're going to type in FL for a formatted list so if you're not familiar with working with PowerShell that's okay we're going to have another lesson where we discuss in greater detail how to work with the management tools for Exchange 2013 so this is just a quick way of seeing that the server installed properly we hit enter and then from here we can see exactly what's going on on this system so it tells us the FQDN of the system it tells us if uh, the various roles have been installed true or false we see the edge server is false everything else is true here we can scroll down and we can see if we're working with a trial edition of exchange which in this case we are because this is not a true production environment so we can see that it says true we can see the remaining trial period and then of course we can always install an actual license on this system and we can pretty much extend that so that it's not a trial edition so you can learn quite a bit by going to the exchange management shell and typing in get dash exchange server and here again we can see that the server roles are mailbox and client access okay so this is great now in the event there was a problem well if there were a problem then you would want to check the application log of event viewer on uh, the server that we're working with here the other thing that we can do is we can review the setup log so that setup log is actually found at our C drive if that's where we installed exchange so depending on where you installed exchange that's where the setup log would be there's a folder called exchange setup logs and here we have exchange setup now it's a really long file here as you can see but if you did have a problem with the installation then you can review the setup log file and search for any errors and then if you find an entry that indicates that an error occurred then you would see what the cause of the error is and you'd get a little bit more detail with regard to how you would rectify that problem so if the installation did not go smoothly you want to check the exchange setup log in addition to the application log of event viewer but as you can see in our case everything went just perfect we have an exchange 2013 server set up and running and so at this point we're ready to begin configuration of this server so that it works perfectly for spy tech prime so we hope you found this informative and thanks for watching